Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be isolating variables today in addition and subtraction equations. That sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually not so bad. Once we get started and we explain the steps. Remember one thing as you're doing this, and that's the property of equality. What that means is whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. You have to keep it balanced. Um, I've heard it compared to a seesaw or teeter-totter has to stay balanced on one side and on the other. So whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. If you do that, you're going to be in good shape for, for what we're calling isolating our variable. When we have an equation like this, x plus 1 equals 3. This may seem really easy because we know 2 plus 1 is 3. But I'm going to show you using this really easy equation how to solve for our variable. And that way you can use that, those same steps in your future equations that we're going to be solving. So how do we get our variable by itself? x plus 1 equals 3. What I have to do is look at my variable, x, and I have to say, how do I get that by itself? I have to strip away everything else that's around it and get it completely by itself on one side of the equal sign. So how would I get rid of this plus 1? Or what's the opposite or the inverse of plus 1? To get rid of plus 1, I would take away 1 or subtract 1. So x plus 1 minus 1. And that's going to cancel each other out. The whole reason we're taking away 1 is because it's going to get rid of the 1. And that will leave us with x by itself. Now, we take away 1 from the left side of the equation. We have to also take away 1 from the right side of the equation. So we end up with x completely by itself on the left and 2 on the right. That's the steps that we're going to follow today for solving for a variable. The equations are going to become more complicated, but we're always going to follow those same steps. And the great thing about this is you never have to wonder if you're right or wrong, because we can always do a check. So we're going to do a check using our answer x is equal to 2. We're going to take that and put it into the original equation and see if it works. Does 2 plus 1 equal 3? And if 2 plus 1 does, in fact, equal 3, then we've done it correctly. We've, we've done it right. All right, let's get on to a little bit of a harder equation, see how we can do this one. We have to solve for the variable t. t minus 15 is equal to 25. This one is maybe a little bit harder. We're going to follow the same exact steps. First, we look. What do I have to do to get t by itself? I had t, and then I took away 15. Well, what's the inverse of taking away 15? We're going to add 15. The opposite of minus 15 is plus 15. So those two will cancel each other out, and I'll be left with just t by itself on the left side of the equation. Over here on the right, I also have to add 15. So 25 plus 15 will give me 40. So my final solution is t is equal to 40. Now, I am going to check my work by looking at my original equation and plugging the value of 40 in where I see the letter t. It's like I take my answer and I put it back in here. Does 40 minus 15 give me 25? And if 40 minus 15 gives me 25, then I did my work correctly and I've got the right answer. And it does. 40 minus 15 is equal to 25, so my work is right. Awesome. Let's work with decimals. I told you we're going to get a little bit more complicated. So now we're working with a, not only a decimal here on the left side, we're also working with a negative over there on the right. So we're going to have to put our kind of brains to work here, but we're going to follow exactly the same steps. How do I get h by itself? Also, you'll notice I call this, I'm not saying solve for the variable anymore. I'm saying use transformations, because that's what this is called. It's called transforming the equation. All right, so we're going to transform this equation. I had h, I added 12.5. The opposite of adding 12.5 is to subtract 12.5. I'm going to subtract 12.5 from both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. And that's it. 12.5 minus 12.5 gives me 0. So on the left side of my equation, I'm left with h by itself. That's what I want. I had negative 24. I subtracted 12.5. So that gives me negative 36.5.
All right. Now I need to check my work because I'm not as comfortable with negatives and decimals as I am with those other numbers. So I'm going to go back and do a check just like I have with all my other questions. Check my work. Stick my original equation. H plus 12.5 is negative 24. I'm going to plug that value of negative 36.5 back into my original equation. Is negative 36.5 plus 12.5 equal to, that should be a negative, negative 24. All right, and that's the question I need to ask. So let me here fix that real quick so that it actually is negative 24. There you go. Okay, someone's taking notes here. All right, so negative 36 plus 12.5, and you can, I mean, you can check this using your calculator. All right, do a negative 36.5 um, plus 12.5 if you want, and see if it gives you negative 24. And you should find that it does. All right, so negative 24 is equal to negative 24. And we're going to do one more question, just a little bit, one step more complicated than this, and that'll be the last question we do. You'll notice we follow exactly the same steps. Here we are. Use transformations to solve the equation. F minus 1.3 is equal to negative 10.4. Ah, now we have negatives and we have subtraction and we have all of this stuff. But we don't have to freak out because we're following exactly the same steps. What's the inverse of negative 1.3? Well, if I want to get rid of that negative 1.3, I'm going to need a positive 1.3. Their opposites are inverse, so they'll cancel each other out. Okay? Sometimes we call that using the inverse operation or the opposite operation. The number is the same, but instead of minus, we're plus. Instead of subtraction, we're using addition. All right? So we add 1.3. We have to do that to both sides of the equation. Um, when you have 10, negative 10.4 and you're adding a positive 1.3, you'll end up with a smaller negative number, which is kind of a funny way to think of it, but negative 10.4 plus 1.3 will give us negative 9.1. Again, if I'm not as comfortable with my adding and subtracting of negative numbers, I can go back and check my work. I take my original equation, I take the answer I got, negative 9.1, and I'm going to substitute that into the original equation, negative 9.1, or yeah. Negative 9.1 for f minus 1.3 should give me 10.4. So that's, let's see what happens. Look at that. Negative 9.1 plus or, or minus 1.3 gives us negative 10.4. And that is the final solution to this equation. All right, that's the last sample question. Hope that lesson's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.